welcome back. It turns out I have bad luck again. I recently purchased this Ford Expedition 2018 with 50,000 miles. I put on a few thousand miles and uh, turns out I'm having engine problems already. Pretty cool. Um, can't say people didn't warn me. Pretty much everybody told me that uh, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Bad things are going to happen. But, uh, you know, I went ahead and bought it because I thought uh, maybe I'll luck out. And I really, truly felt that way. Uh, red flag number one, though, should have been when I went to the dealership and they pulled up the vehicle history report. There was a whole bunch of dealer maintenance. And, uh, of course, a salesman just told me, well, oh, it's maintenance. No problem. Don't worry about it. Nothing to see here, folks. It's just maintenance. But there was a lot of it. And uh, I asked for a breakdown. He's like, oh, I, I don't really have uh, information of that. Just that it was here on every single day of certain months is what it kind of looked like. Um, but yeah, so driving it. Everything's good. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> I wish I bought one of these a long time ago. But alas, I uh, kind of ran into some problems here. So basically, here's a breakdown. Buy the thing with 51,000 miles, almost 52, and uh, everything's normal. Then all of a sudden, that happened. And it didn't really feel any very normal anymore. So when the sound came on, it kind of started out fairly quiet uh, to the point where I really didn't pay any attention to it. Um, apparently I should have because just got worse and worse and more often and I saw some forms that said oh if you hold the gas it won't let it start it'll stop it so I tried that a few times uh, it did work uh, I really didn't like doing that though and uh, deep down inside I you know things got warranty so <laughs> why is that gonna be an issue and then Ford just recalled something like 90,000 2.7 and 3 liter EcoBoost now don't get me wrong this thing has the 3.5 this is the second generation of the 3.5 and uh, Long story short, the cam phasers are toast, 50,000 miles, and I swear on everything I own that it already has new turbos because they look brand new, brand new. And again, I can't seem to dig up the information from the dealer. Um, if somebody has any experience with how I would find that, please let me know, uh, as I would like to find out uh, the mechanical history of this thing, if that is possible. You know, if the dealerships keep that in, in uh, their systems, I'd be all over knowing you know, just for peace of mind, realistically, um, it, you know, shifts great. I know people say the transmissions go bad. This does have the 10 speed. There seems to really be essentially no issues as far as I can tell right now. I'm very pleased with how it runs and drives. I'm getting 20 plus miles to the gallon. Um, I did a little bit of towing, you know, just for, just because, um, instead of using the truck. And I mean, essentially like, let's not kid ourselves. This thing is a truck, um, makes truck power. It's got truck frame truck towing rating technically trailer breaks the works you name it and i towed a small trailer i mean it wasn't that heavy no problem but i mean with the ecoboost it's nice it's uh you know it feels like i'm driving you know diesel almost because that uh, low-end torque just comes in right off the hop but i should probably stop praising this thing start complaining a little bit more because just like my last vehicle, which was the Acura, which was insane. The head gasket was gone, 70,000 miles. Bad head gasket, didn't want to start. Dealer didn't want to start it. It was warrantied, thankfully. Uh, so literally, I just bought this thing, and the cam phases are already toast. I really hope this is not a sign of things to come, because I do really like this, and much like my long-gone Acura RDX, I want this to be a long-term vehicle for me and i'm really hoping that uh i'm really hoping that's going to be the case now they did update the cam phasers i believe in 2021 or 2022 for this generation of engine the dealership assured me that it was going to get the latest and greatest part number when they fixed it which by the way more shaded acura when this thing went to acura well the rdx clearly um it was over there for over a month it was insane and I know a head gasket is takes some time. They gotta pull the turbos off and whatnot. The cam phaser job on this engine sucks. 
the whole front end has to come off front end of the engine. I'm not saying the grill and all that. Um, however, a lot of techs maybe would take some stuff on the front end off just for ease. Um, but it's a big job, and it's not a fun one either. <laughs> that being said, I dropped this thing off on a Wednesday, and I got a phone call Thursday night. It's ready to go. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, a 10-hour job, ready to get picked up. Head gasket on my Acura, a 10-hour job, a month before it got done. Not acceptable. So, so far, uh, let's recap here. Uh, my Ford Expedition kind of suffered some engine failure stuff. Ford made it right extremely quickly. And I'm thankful for that. So, hopefully, going forward, this means that they may have just garnered a bit of a customer. Uh, because they do make great stuff. But uh, the 2.7 and 3 liter EcoBoost uh, recall, that's pretty crazy. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's just, the, you know, it's only for one year. It's not a big deal. Well, you know what? It's, it's a recall that just started. So, let's see where else that ends up. And... Uh, you know, could you imagine buying a $100,000 Ford Raptor with a 3 liter just to find out, oh, your valves might drop and literally explode your motor? Awkward. Not the news you want to find out. Hopefully, I never have problems like that. And if there is recalls, I believe there is some recalls on this. I haven't uh, looked in to find out if they're outstanding or not. But if they are, I'm sure that Ford will take good care of me because that's a relationship that we have started from day one. And I'm not even mad that things broke because it's under warranty. So that means it was fixed for free. And it was fixed very quickly, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And it sure seems like a lot of dealerships out there are not handling the workload that way. And it's pretty straightforward. The reason is because if you look TikTok, Instagram, Facebook... All the places where you'll see video, there is a million videos out there of techs complaining about the crazy amount of hours that they are getting paid. And by crazy, I mean minimal, lackluster, garbage, work for free kind of stuff is what I mean uh, to do a lot of this warranty work. And that is the biggest reason why we are, as customers, getting horribly let down because the people who are getting paid don't want to do the work. The dealerships, they don't want to do the work because they aren't getting paid appropriately and that trickles down to the mechanics and i mean if you're a mechanic and they want you to fix something for less than what you're paid dollars an hour no one's going to do that anyway as usual like comment subscribe and if you don't <laughs> do it anyway because every now and then there's going to be something cool on here <laughs>